Okay, in this video, I'm going through the binomial distribution and how we use the calculator to help us with these problems. Um, so the first thing I need to do is tell you where to find these buttons. So assuming you have your TI-84 or your TI-Inspire with the 84 faceplate on it, um, assuming you have that, uh, you know, here's what we do. So first, you, you need to go to the distribution menu, the dister menu. It's right above VAR, so if you hit second VARs dister, um, it'll bring up this long list of things. Um, if you scroll way down in that list, if you scroll all the way down to A and B, you'll find two things. One of them says binome PDF, and one of them says binome CDF. Right? PDF is the one that you use. You use this to calculate individual probabilities. So if you had a question where you were, you know, uh, rolling a die seven times and you wanted to know the probability of getting at least five, or I'm sorry, of getting exactly five successes, you would use binome PDF. So you use PDF if you're doing an individual probability. Binome PDF basically does the formula that you learned in the last video. It does that for you. Um, that's going to be the first example I'm going to go over today. Binome CDF is a little bit more complicated, but is awesome. Binome CDF, and, and actually I should go through how you use these things. When you hit Binome CDF on your calculator, like if you actually hit that button, it comes up and asks you for trials, it asks you for P, and it asks you for an X value. In fact, both Binome PDF and Binome CDF both do that. In trials, you're going to put N. In other words, you're going to put the number of trials you have. So if you roll in a die 17 times, you'll put in 17. If you're shooting a basketball 12 times, you'll put in 12. Okay. P is where you put the probability of success. So that's in the previous video we talked about that as being P. For X value, you put you know the, the R value that you're looking at. For binome PDF, it's going to find the probability of R. Binome CDF is awesome. Binome CDF is going to find the probability... And, and by the way, what this C stands for is it stands for cumulative. This is going to find the probability of 0 and 1 and 2 all the way up to whatever R value you put in. So if you, for instance, if you have 12 trials and you put in an X value of, se an X value of 7, it will go through and it will compute the probability of 0 successes, 1 successes, 2 successes, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 successes, and add all of them together for you. It does all of the heavy lifting for that. I hope to be able to, to illustrate that for you in the examples we have coming up. So the first question here, um, a fair die is thrown seven times. Find the probability of obtaining a five or a six exactly two times, right? So first of all, is this problem a PDF problem or is this a CDF problem? Well, it says the die is thrown seven times. That means that our N is seven. Our number of trials is seven, right? Then they want to find the probability of something happening exactly two times. That means we're going to use PDF. We're looking for one specific event. I want it to happen two times out of seven. That means my R is going to be two. And what's the probability of that happening? What's the probability of us getting a five or a six? Well, that's two things out of six. So that's a one out of three chance. So we could do this problem without a calculator by doing 7C2 times 1 3rd squared times 2 thirds to the 5th. And, it, and it's worthwhile for you to know that. Like, that's good. But the real way to do this problem is to just do binome PDF. Right? When that comes up, it's going to ask you how many trials. What is P? So our trials is 7. Our P is 1 3rd. What is our X value? Well, our X value is 2. And then underneath that it says paste. So if you do that and then hit that paste button, so 7, 1 third, 2, paste. It'll paste something crazy back to your home screen. In fact, you can sort of see it there. If you just hit enter again, it'll execute that command and come back and tell you, hey everybody, 0.571. So there's apparently a 57% chance that you will roll a 5 or a 6 exactly twice when you roll the dice seven times. Okay? We didn't have to go through computing this whole thing. We were able to do it with a calculator and get the same answer either way. Okay? So let's go on to another example. In this one, a basketball player has an 83% chance of making each free throw shot. During a game, they attempt 12 free throws. Right there, you're, oh, great, so my, that, you know, n equals 12. Find the probability that they miss fewer than five shots. Now, this is where we need to be careful. What does it mean to miss fewer than five? And I actually recommend you guys write this down. Write down, like, probability to miss fewer 
than five shots. So literally, what does that mean? That's the probability that they will miss how many? Zero, or one, or two, or three, or four. Not five, because they would need to miss fewer than five shots. Okay? So is this a PDF problem, or is this a CDF problem? Well, it could be a PDF problem. You could do the PDF with an x value of 0, then of 1, then of 2, then of 3, then of 4, and manually add them all together, but that'd be annoying. This is exactly what CDF does. CDF is supposed to add up 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. It adds all the way up until whatever x value you give it. So for this problem, we're going to say there were 12 trials. Now, we've got to be careful here. What's the probability of success? In this problem, what am I counting as success? Like, I know to the basketball player, 83% is success for them, but what I want for my problem is I want him to miss this many times. So for me, I'm actually looking at 17%. I'm looking at 0.17. That's what he needs to do four times or less. Now, what X value am I going to give? Well, for X value for CDF, you give it the highest number that you want it to count. So I'm going to say that again. Because you, you want it to add up 0 and 1 and 2 and 3, and 4 is the highest one you want it to add, 4 is the x value you give to it. So on your calculator, if you go to your distribution, if you go to binome CDF, if you tell it that your trials were 12, your p-value is 0.17, your x value was 4, and then paste that, it will come back, and remember, you got to hit enter again. After you hit enter again, it'll come back and tell you 0 0.961. So apparently a 96% chance that they would miss fewer than five shots. Now to lead into my next problem, I sort of want to ask you guys a question. If I say that he missed fewer than five shots, What's another way that you could say the exact same thing? Like, pause the video and think about that for a second. Think about another way you could express that same idea. We could say that he made, like, five or more shots, or he made at least five shots. These two things would both be the same thing, and they both would give you this 0.961. In the next example, I'm going to sort of go through an example that's like that. So for this example, a student has an 85% chance of getting any given multiple choice question right. Sounds like a pretty good deal. On a 20 question exam, what is the probability that they will get at least 15 questions correct? So what I really recommend here is write down what they want. They want the probability of at least 15 right. Okay. So this means the probability of 15 or 16, or 17, or 18, on up to 20, right. So we already have a feeling like, oh, I'm probably going to use CDF for this, but, but this is so important. CDF will only add up from 0 up to something. It will not add up from 15 to 20. It will only add up from 0 up to something. So I need to find a way to take this probability and rewrite it adding up from zero to something. So the thing you guys need to think about is what is another way of expressing this concept of getting between 15 and 20 right? Okay. So wouldn't this be the probability of getting five wrong or four wrong or three wrong all the way down to zero wrong? What I'm doing is I'm really just sort of like translating each of these into a different... Like getting getting 15 right is the same as getting 5 wrong. Getting 16 right is the same as getting 4 wrong. Getting 17 right is the same as getting 3 wrong. So really, I've turned this problem into getting the probability of 0 or 1 or 2 on up to 5 wrong. Notice I've now turned this probability into one of those 0 to x style things. right? So for this problem... You now need to figure out what is your number of trials, what is your probability, what is your x value, and then you're going to want to put that into your binome CDF. All right, so if you haven't already done so, pause the video work through this. Should be 20 trials, 
My probability of success is 0 0.15, and the reason that it's that is we were told that the student had an 85% chance of getting a question right, so that means they have a 15% chance of getting it wrong, and that's what I'm counting here. My x value is 5, because I use the highest value that I want to go up to and count. So if I punch all of that stuff into my binome CDF, right, so if you put, you know, the 20 into trials, you put the 0 0.15 into P, and you put 5 in for your x value and paste that and hit enter, it'll come back and tell you that there is a 0 0.933 probability, a 93.3% chance that they will get 15 or more questions right. So I hope that made sense. I hope you guys had your calculators on you so you could try this out. Um, th that's, that's all there is for the binomial distribution. You know, there, there's a couple other things we kind of have to see, but I'm hoping we'll see those as we go through the problems. So uh, good luck on starting some of the problems.